Finally, I did it. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, it's the Iron Purple. You guys have no idea how much this rustled my dang jimmies. Alright, the overhead mapping thing is a lot harder than what I thought it was. It gives that more 3D kind of depth. Um, this There's very little scripting involved. There, but you don't have to open the script editor at all. It's all three events. But mother of God, this gave me so much problems. It is insane. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to hold control so you guys can see how this looks. Just walking around. This is like an overhead feeling. Like uh, something is above you. And this is all done with a picture. I'll explain everything. So let's get into it. So as you can see right here, I have my map. And I have calculator. Calculator was not actually needed that much. But um, first thing you want to do is make sure you have GIMP open. And here's the image that I used. As you can see, it's obviously a lot larger than what I thought it was. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways, what you want to do is right-click your, your map. You want to get the dimensions, so 34 and 26. So you want to open calculator. You want to type 34 times 32. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, 34 times 32. See that's your height, or well, there's your width. I mean, I'm sorry. Now, which well, you're not done yet. Which one, I'm sorry, I got distracted. <laughs> anyway, so what you want to do is times that by two. So there's your there's the width of your image, right there. Two being, like, yeah, might as well just do two because it will wad your jimmies up in a knot, and who knows what else? I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. This done drove me crazy. Anyways, now you want to take your height. Open calculator. Now you know the width of your image, which is 2,000, well, for my case, it was 2,000. Your height is 26. You want to do 26 times 32 times 2. So your, the height of your image is now 1,664 1, in my case. Your case will be something different. So you want to go to GIMP and use those dimensions that you just got for width and height. X being width. Well, yeah, you, well, like you already know. It says right there. <laughs> uh, anyways, and then you kind of want to just draw your overhead image. I'm going to change this up real quick and show you what I mean. Oh, and actually, I'm going to give these opacity. That's all I'm going to do. And re-export it. I have it exporting directly to the pictures folder. But anyways, you would save your image when you're done. You would import it here. Yeah, you would import it. Pictures. Right there. See right there? Right there, girl. No. <laughs> now, um, you want to have an event. And I'll go over this. Don't worry. I know it looks confusing. I'll go over everything I did. First, I showed the picture. But um, you know what? I'm just going to redo this in a different page. Make sure you have a parallel process. Now, you want, to, you want to control variables. You want to make four variables. Overhead X, overhead Y, temp X, and temp Y. First thing you want to do is, you want. let me show you. Oh, I'm sorry, I'll just do it this way. Show picture, your, the picture that you had, equal to variables overhead X and overhead, dang it, and overhead Y. As you can see right here. And now you want to click OK. Now, one. Now, what I did was, I'll go over it actually. So, go to layer, go to tab one in the events, control variables, temp x, script is equal to dollar sign game map, game underscore map, dot, what was it actually? Hold on, let me see, I gotta see. Okay, display x. So game map dot display x. Copy and paste that. Select uh, over or select temp y. Now change the little x down here to y. And now you're gonna want to set that. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What did I do? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna want to set variables overhead x equal to temp x. Copy and paste that. You're gonna, oops, dag nab it. <laughs> You're gonna want to uh, change it to y. So overhead y, make it temp y equal to that at least. Now what I did was all you have to do. This part is kind of tricky. Um, okay, when okay when we're editing our variable, you see how you have like a 0, 0, 0, 4, 0, 0, 0, 003 right next to the variables. Whatever variable, if you're down here or something, and your variables are here. You're going to want to know that number. So 72 for this one. But uh, in our case, this is 3 and 4. So set overhead x 
equal to dollar sign in the script, by the way. Game, oops, not guess. Game variable, game variables rather. Three, on, huh. yeah, three, which is temp x times sixty four, which I don't understand, but um, multiplication is is a donkey. Um, hold on, did I have it set for multiply? No, minus. I'm sorry, you have to have to subtract. So subtract by this amount times 64. This asterisk symbol, which is shift and 8, and then 64. That would actually be multiplying it by 2. For some reason, if you if you do this any other way, it's going to go against your view, and it's going to be all awkward looking. This took a while to figure out, but you know what? I'm glad I finally did it. Anyways, so overhead x minus equals game variables 3 times 64. Copy and paste that. Edit this and make it y. This time change the 3 to a 4. Now, I can delete this page because it's the exact same thing. And delete this one. Now this is what we just made after you've done your imaging and all that. Save, yes. And now you have your overhead image working. Mother of God, was this ever hard. <laughs> I don't know why, but this confused the chicken nuggets out of me, man. Because it wasn't working right. Like, okay, let me explain something to Interbrain. If you guys are somehow watching this, for the love of God, if you make RPG Maker again, make it to where you can get the views X and Y, please. Because, <laughs> see, I tried my first time recording this, I was like, Hey, um, okay, game data, wait, where's the views X and the views Y? Yeah, it is not here. No matter where you want to look, you can get the character's map X and screen X, but then, then if, you're, if your map doesn't scroll, like, or if you're at the very edge of the map, the, the overhead layer still moves with the player. So you had to do it this way. Oh, it was such a pain. I had to go into scripts, and I had to be like, okay, where, oh, where is it? I had to look in this one, and then I had to just, oh, okay, display X and Y. Maybe that works. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man, this was such a pain in the neck. But, you know, I'm glad I got it to work. Hold on, you know what? I need to do something. I want to see how how this looks if you have, like, a lot of detail into it. I'm just going to have, like, a bunch of random squares. Hold on. Black. Black. Oh, fill the whole thing. I'm just going to see how this looks. And then I'm going to make the video. For, uh, yeah. It's kind of cool. I like that. But man, is it ever hard to do. Son of a ham. Yeah, you know, you can also do this to make, like, uh... I don't know. But it's not, like, updating as accurately with the map, so it kind of, like... I don't know, it's still, it's kind of funky looking, but it does get the job done. And you can make, like, a 3D-ish depth kind of thing. Alright, but, um, to make sure that the, the map, or the image, doesn't scroll, like, outside of the map, that's, that's what the whole calculator thing was for. We multiplied the map's total width by 2, so that we can divide, or so that we can, so that the image can actually scroll with the map and be at the bottom right corner when the view is at the bottom right corner, etc, etc. So anyways, I really hope this helps and I'm going to undo this and I'm going to make the video now for the the intro. So, thank you guys for watching and you don't have to watch this if I want to. Alright, so Okay, I'm gonna not talk now. I'm done talking because yeah, this is pretty much the video thing. So again, thank you, thank you guys for watching. And you are all awesome, and I hope this helps. Mr. Jimmy Rustling Problem, you found zero dollars. This thing tells me this is not as accurate as it can be, though. But, uh, yeah, I hope this helps. Thanks, guys, for watching.